In this video, we're taking this environmental portrait and we're going to turn it into this final image using Luminar AI's updated sky replacement tech. Let's dive in. Hello, my Skylum friends. My name is Pai. I'm one of the founders of Lynn and Jersa Photography, SLR Lounge Photography Education, and Visual Flow Presets. Now, we are here to talk specifically about what's new in the sky replacement tech that Skylum has added to Luminar AI. So let's pause and just go ahead and download the exercise file that comes along with this tutorial, if you so please. Uh, you can also load up your own image, but try to find an image that actually has kind of a sky that you want to replace and a reflection because, well, I'm going to show you what's new. So look, let's go ahead and do this. Now we could use templates to kind of, you know, start off our editing and, and the templates are really powerful and it's great. But what I want to do is actually edit this with you guys from the ground up. I'm going to start this. It's funny, my Luminar workflow is kind of backwards to compare, like to how I would typically edit. And the reason is I can do so much cool manipulation inside of Luminar that I like to start with those first. And honestly, when it comes to the way I edit, I do edit in a, in a way that's kind of the biggest changes come first and then we go to refinement changes. So in that way, we are kind of following that same workflow and the biggest changes we're gonna be making is essentially to the sky. So what we're gonna do is go down to the creative side. So right here under the creative panel, I have the option now of, and, and this is updated too, we have this kind of sky preview, which is really nice. Uh, so that we don't have to actually click and look at each one of them. So I'm actually going to go with a dramatic kind of sunset shot. Part of this tutorial, I want you guys to understand how to make a convincing sky replacement. And obviously Luminar has all the tech that you need, but there's some basic kind of photography considerations that you need to keep in mind. So I'm going to select this one and see if it's, oh, I already freaking love that. Now look at this. This is so cool. I have the sky and it's perfectly kind of matched and masked into the shot, but then we actually see the sky in the reflection. So this was not previously available and it kind of ended up where if you had an image like this and you replace the sky, somebody who kind of knew what was up would look at the water and be like, uh, it doesn't quite look convincing, but now this already looks fantastic. So I'm gonna land with this dramatic sunset three and already it's looking really cool. It's crazy how one click, if I turn this on and off, that one click is just absolutely wild or that one little change. So now let's start working the sky just a little bit, okay? So th there's a couple things that I'm noticing. One, we want to make sure that the light direction matches the existing light in the scene. Now you look at the shadows on the mountain, right? The lights hitting on the left side and then shadows on the right. Same thing on our subject, light on the left side, shadows on the right. So the clouds are actually working quite nicely because the light's hitting them on the left side and it's going into shadow on the right. So that already works. If it didn't, we could go to orientation and we could flip right here to kind of make it match whatever light direction we have in the shot. Okay, so the first step in a good convincing sky is choosing a sky that could plausibly be lit in a similar fashion as the underlying image, choosing a sky that matches the lighting condition. Now we can adjust horizon blending and all this kind of stuff, but honestly, it did a really good job with everything. So I'm gonna go down. We don't need to do any mask refinement here. Um, I do want to do some scene relighting. Now, relighting has been reworked as well, and we get a much better effect. Look at this. Look at how freaking beautiful the relighting effect is now. That, to me, is absolutely wild. So, previously, I wasn't able to use relighting to this extent, and so I was doing other methods of blending and doing a little bit of relighting. Now, relighting is doing all of it which again is wild. I can also control the relight saturation just in case I want a little bit more. See how the, the mountains in the background are just a little bit still on the blue side, right? Because our underlying image was all blue. So I might add a bit of saturation to those mountains just to turn them into that kind of relit look. I can also focus specifically on relighting the human in the shot. I do want to leave her kind of primarily where she's at, but I am going to add maybe a slight amount of relighting to her just to add a little bit of those tones into the shot as well. And side note, this is my amazing, incredible, powerful, beautiful partner in crime, Yeneth. I love working on images that have meaning to me. All right, let's go down to the reflection. 
we can also update the reflection amount. This is, again, crazy. I am going to go on the kind of wild side for this. I'm going to take this up to like 75% and call it good about right there. If there's any other sky adjustments you wanna make, then make them. One of my favorites is one that I proposed to the Skylum team, and yes, Skylum team, I will always take credit for this. But it's the atmosphere haze. So essentially what this is, is the ability to kind of dial back the overall opacity of that sky. So in a scene like this, where again, if I go back and I look at the sky, it's a very, very bright image, right? So in a scene like this, I don't want my sky to be so dark because it doesn't look like it necessarily fits. So what I'm going to do is actually bring up the atmospheric haze, which basically just lowers the opacity of the sky. It allows kind of the sky, if you imagine white is behind the sky, adjusting the haze is letting more of the white show through. So it's, it's essentially making it less pronounce less strong we can also adjust brightness but honestly where it's at is pretty good i might bring brightness a little bit up the warmth i find it to be actually pretty spot on as well i might take it up a little bit just for stylization these are just like kind of stylization type things and there's one last thing which if you notice the mountains are sort of softly defocused the sky though is still pretty sharp so again there's been improvements on defocus because in the past raising it up to like one or two, I would usually get too much of an effect. Now it's it's kind of picture perfect. It looks amazing. Okay, so this is what it's looking like now. And I, I, I mean, this kind of blows me away with, I haven't even used my left hand, y'all. My left hand has been sitting in my lap this whole time. I'm using sliders just to make these adjustments. So with that, now I'm gonna go and make some other adjustments. So I started with the biggest adjustments first, right? That was our sky, getting that into the shot and making it convincing. Now I'm gonna go back to kind of the essential tools. I'm gonna go to my AI accent piece. And this is where I love, I love the, the AI built in kind of accent features. It's like adding mid-tone contrast, but it does it in a really controlled way and it's beautiful. The sky enhance, Okay, I'm going to leave that actually zeroed out. I think it looks plenty good as is. My composition, I do want to make a little tweak. I'm going to pull in just a little bit. I'm also going to just fix the horizon line ever so slightly. I believe I fixed it. If I didn't, I will retackle it. Okay, that looks fantastic. Okay, now let's go to light. I like the temperature as is, but sometimes I do like to play a little bit and just see if I like something a little bit more cool and a little bit more warm. Right now, I really like it where it's at. I'm gonna add a little bit of smart contrast after I do a little bit of tuning to my highlights and shadows. Specifically, I wanna raise the shadows just a bit, and then I think I wanna add just a bit of contrast. I might even modify this curve a little bit, okay? So let's go right there. I'm gonna go down to the curve. One of my favorite things to do on a curve is to lift slightly at the bottom. This makes it so that all the shadows get clipped at a, at a dark gray. So it kind of keeps the shadows from getting too deep. And then I'll do the same thing on the highlights, okay? Now doing this is always gonna flatten out an image. In fact, this is, I call this curve kind of a flattening curve, right? Because we're flattening the highlights. We're letting the highlights to go to a, a bright white. Um, but it's not quite white, it's like a bright gray. And then we're letting the shadows go to a dark gray. Doing this reduces image contrast. So the way that you add it back is we're gonna add another point right here to add an additional contrast. We're gonna add another point right here to kind of pump back up the highlights. And we can choose, you go too far and you end up with this kind of like, it, it doesn't look good. It, it looks like it's posterized, it looks like things are blowing out. It doesn't look quite right. I'm actually gonna tune this down a little bit. I might even bring the highlight point down. Yeah. So what I'm gonna do is find a place where we can get the dress to kind of drop to a nice bright gray and then subtly add just a little bit of that tone curve, a little bit of the, the mid-tone highlights back. Okay, this is looking fantastic. For color, there is kind of one thing that I do wanna tweak. I, I wanna tweak a little bit of the saturation. Um, the, the thing that I want to do is actually just to take a little bit of the skin tone and make it a little bit more neutral on my subject's face. So I might have to do that with a, uh, with a brush, um, but what I kind of want to do is pump up a little bit of the other colors in the scene. So I'm actually going to use Vibrance. Vibrance is kind of a 
a targeted way of enhancing color. It kind of leaves off skin tones and focuses on other tones in the image, whereas saturation is gonna really apply it to every single thing in the shot, right? So what I might wanna do is apply, let's say 10 saturation, let's say 20 vibrance, and it starts to get a little bit too much on the skin, but the background looks amazing, right? So I want you to take it to this place, then all we're gonna do is just zoom in a little bit, okay? Let's zoom in, let's use the mask, and now we're just gonna erase off, whoops, I'm gonna zoom back in. Um, we're gonna erase off of the skin, okay? So that's it. All we do is just, we make our enhancement and then we just pull it right off the skin. Now notice that my, my feather is just a little bit on the, um, on the strong side, right? The feather is just a little bit too much. So I can actually reduce the softness of the brush and just go back in there and kind of retweak a little bit. So I'm just gonna paint back on the edges a little bit because it kind of took off too much. Again, I'm right hand editing, one, ma one hand this whole time. I have to put a Southern accent on that. I, I really don't know why. It's part of who I am, y'all. My mother was born in Oklahoma. I was born in Iran. I understand that this is a very confusing mix for you guys. You're gonna learn to deal with it just like I have. Okay. I hope you like my side commentary. All right, that looks fantastic. Okay, so now if I kind of zoom back out on the image, let's close up the, the mask. Let's go ahead and click back out. Now we get this really nice skin tone and we have a, a little oomph to the color in the scene, okay? I can even turn that oomph up a bit if I'm like, yeah, I need a little more oomph. Give me more cowbell. Yeah, that's some nice cowbell. I like that. Okay, if you see a little bit of those mask areas, like right here, I can kind of see the mask. Um, just go back into the mask and just add back in, like right here, because I'm noticing it is a little bit off. Okay, and that could also be our sky replacement mask. I might get in there and refine that mask just a little bit and see if we can't tighten that piece up. Okay. This is looking absolutely gorgeous. Now, I, the last thing that I wanna do is let's get back to Sky and let's see if we can't get the uh, mask refinement to kind of fill in those gaps a little bit. So I'm gonna go to close gaps and I'm just gonna start raising it and let's see if we can kind of get it to fill in. Let's bring it over to the global. We're just gonna play with these sliders a little bit. Right about there. Okay. It is getting there. Let's see if we take close gaps all the way up. Yeah, that's much better. Okay, and let's take the details down and then let's start bringing it up a little bit. Okay, so that is looking pretty darn good at this point. I'm gonna go ahead and close up this little section. Oh, and I love this final image. I'm gonna do one last little thing. I'm gonna go up to enhance, actually let's go to light and let's just slightly increase the exposure. I might reduce the contrast just a bit. There. Yes, I'm loving it. This is crazy. Let me show you guys what this image looked like before. So let's do this. Here's the before and after. This is absolutely wild. The before, the after. I hope you guys get a good idea on what's new in terms of the sky replacement technology, the ability to now detect water and reflections and all of that, as well as the additional enhancements made to relighting. All of this stuff makes it super powerful. Hope this gives you all some ideas. And if you enjoyed the video, I'd love for you to give it a like, comment below on the Skylam channel. And of course, if you guys want more of these Skylam tutorials, please subscribe to the Skylam channel right here on YouTube so that way you can be updated when new videos go up. That's it for me. If you guys would like to follow me, you can follow me at PyJersa on Instagram. It's kind of my hub for everything that I do. And I'll see you all in the next video. Peace.